Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio by two lovely young ladies by the name of Megan and Nicole Michelena. Ladies, how are you? We're good. Thank you, Jay, so much for having us on the show. Yeah, it's awesome to, to be have here. you. Yeah, it's awesome to have you. So I think on my left is Megan and on my right is Nicole. My God, do I have that right? Or is it the opposite? Green is Megan. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right. You guys are, hey. you guys are right. So on the show looking out it's left versus right. So, but it's for you guys, it's right, left, but I got it right. So you guys are awesome. So you guys are um, certified mental health experts specializing in psychedelic medicine. Um, and they're at a microdose institute, which is called, I guess, Zenchronicity. Am I correct? Yes. Awesome. Uh, again, obviously they are sisters and, uh, they founded a microdose mentorship program that supports healing through psilocybin. So they're in the right place being on the Jay Campbell podcast. Um, so, so gals, before we, before we get into the conversation today, I've been asking a lot of my guests and for the purposes of everybody knowing when we're filming this, this is Thursday, October 26th. 2023. I don't have that big of a queue, so you guys will run pretty soon. Um, where are you in the flow of the planet slash the plane of Earth, the third density of existence, as far as like where are we going? Are you guys like buying? Are you sellers of humanity or buyers? Oh, that's a great question. Buyers or sellers of humanity? I would say we're buyers of humanity. Uh in the fact that like, I'm here to help people buy back into being human. <laughs> I think everyone's checked out and it's time that we check back in and realize we're spiritual beings having a human experience because people are selling out everywhere. And I want, well, we want people to come back in into life and step in instead of being part of this matrix that's made by people that don't give a shit about other people. So we're selling, I'm, I'm a seller for old ways. Like we're, we're a buyer of the new and a seller of the old. There we go. Look at this. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You, you use the term. I always say when people, when you, when we say that, just, let's just say those who would hold us back, the parasitic energies, mm -hmm. I use the term people very loosely <laughs> 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 because I don't think any of us really believe that there are people, they have people under their control, but uh, I don't yeah. know if actually, you know, interdimensionally or behind the veil, they're actually people, but that's a whole nother podcast and a whole nother conversation. But today we're going to be obviously talking about psilocybin. Um, and as you know, for my audience and just to, you know, refresh their memories, I think most of my people know, I mean, I have been using everything and anything for probably 30 years, right? I'm 52, almost 53. I just scheduled a amazing Thailand retreat with my wife and a bunch of people from my inner circle. That's a 10 day detox retreat, but we're doing like three deep dives of MEO that'll be wow. profound with like one of the world's like leading shamans. Who's, you know, been in the Amazon for 40 years, leading excursions and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, I'm obviously very familiar with entheogens and stuff like that. Now I, from my, so my experience with psilocybin is um, recreationally, using mushrooms to party and then of course you know using you know for full disclosure and then of course using psilocybin as you guys talk about it which is to enhance life to optimize uh cellular receptors and just to be more alive right i mean as you said uh earlier um i think it was megan i mean nicole said it i'm sorry not michelle's nicole um <sighs> people are turned off dude i mean like the planet right now is really you know i like to use hawkins as map of consciousness to scale things and it's like 80 percent of people are gone right yeah. they've been they've been vaxxed f three times or boosted another three times <laughs> you know they're i mean let's just be honest like they're in fear i mean all those yeah. people are in fear you don't choose that operandus unless you're in fear right so if you're in fear right. consciousness you need you need a boost <laughs> you need aid right I mean, nobody Absolutely. needs anything. They require is probably the best word. I don't like using the word need. It's a low conscious word. But but the truth is, is that there's a lot of people that can utilize your guys' services. So let's talk about that really quick. Um, the 12 psilocybin strange and, and, and strains, excuse me, and which one is best for healing. And obviously you guys can just go back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so we we really believe in the energetic fields of the body, so the chakra systems. And in our practice with psilocybin and working and speaking with a lot of shamans um, over the last couple of years, we have really honed in on understanding certain strains for certain energy centers. And those, of course, like you said, Jay, your you know your audience is very familiar with you know energetic things and stuff like that. But um, the chakra systems are the seven. So I believe that there is twelve and even more than that. But we work in the main the main of the body, the main energy centers. And we look at people's trauma. Where is it sitting and why is it stuck? And using the psilocybin strand that works best with them. And we find that actually most individuals do the best on golden teachers because most people aren't grounded. They have a lot of root trauma, a lot of sacral trauma, money scarcity, abandonment issues. Um, a lot of that exists in the lower chakras, which are actually, I always get this flipped, masculine, right? The lower chakras are masculine. Yes, I always yes. mess them up. Um, and if you kind of look at society right now, we can link this to look at the fall of the masculine because the divine feminine hasn't held them accountable. And we've watched this happen over many, many generations now. And yet it's something that we're still not talking about. And so I would answer that Golden Teachers is one of the most healing strains and one of the most gentle strains um, of psilocybin out there because it's really... It's kind, but it'll show you also what you need to look at, and it really helps move trauma. Yeah, Beautiful. and it, I would, well, probably my favorite strand to work with is because even just like a microdose of it is wild, is actually Jedi Mindfuck, and that's what it's called. <laughs> and I also love that like Yoda is right behind you, because uh, love do Star Wars. Do or do not. Yeah, there's so much, um, there's so much in that series that's divine. But anyway, it I love that because the first time we actually even took a microdose of it, I was like, what is happening? Like the universe makes so much sense, but it was 200 milligrams. So, you know, you do a, a macrodose of that, it's completely different than Golden Teachers. Uh, you know, you literally go to a different dimension yeah uh so with that you know that's more of like expanding of the mind when but i wouldn't recommend that to somebody that's new to mushrooms and psychedelics in general because you're gonna get i mean sure that might be okay for some people but you're gonna completely um have a lot of integration to do even after like an 800 milligram dose if you've never messed in psychedelics and don't really understand how the universe works uh, but those are upper chakras so of course we've got to work in the lower chakras first and that's what was really fascinating to me when we started working with mushrooms is that they're not all the same that it's it's just like anything right there might be similarities to the experience but what the energy that they're actually bringing is like nicole and i are obviously she's the closest genetic thing to me but we're totally different beings even though our voices and everything sound quite similar so uh you know the different frequencies and understanding that you know, I, ayahuasca is also a psychedelic, but you're gonna have a completely different experience on ayahuasca than you ever will even taking like seven grams of mushrooms. So, uh, you know, understanding how all these things work is been part of like the really amazing adventure um, and learning from shamans and stuff that have been using psychedelics for thousands of years, um, you know, through generations and generations. And, you know, the Western world, it's like, we're, we're new kids kind of face planning through this. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that face planning. I use that term all the time. Um, well, listen for because you, obviously we just met each other today, but uh, I'm a student of the Pleiadian teachings, like a very yeah. advanced, a very advanced student. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that you guys talked about the divine feminine because the truth <laughs> is creation, creator force source, whatever you want to call it is actually feminine. And people don't understand this because obviously the patriarchal domination of society by the lower astral energies, let's just, let's not talk about them any further than that. I mean, I could, I mean, actually I have a podcast coming out in two weeks that if YouTube actually lets it run, I, I'll be blown away. It'll probably, it's, it, it's honestly the first examination of that probably ever in the public and the mainstream. And it's from an, a very advanced academic who's also very consciously aware uh, but we we talk about them. But obviously, as you girls know, we've you know had, and again, all the timelines are bullshit too. But we've had at least three to four thousand years 
of the suppression of the goddess energy. And yeah. men are absolutely clueless as to what really is happening. Uh, and again, they've been made to follow orders you know, all the way up till now. And you guys obviously are aware too, that if you're not like us from a conscious awareness standpoint, mm -hmm. women think they're men and men are basically <laughs> women. Yes. I mean, let's just be honest. It's so I mean, it's it's so insane, right? Like you look at all these mm -hmm. beta males with low testosterone oh. who basically yes. are clueless. Yes. They can't walk up and down mm -hmm. the street and make eye contact mm -hmm. with you. They're afraid. 50% mm -hmm. of men, this is a fact, by the way, 50% of men in North America in the last two years under the age of 30 have not had sex one time. Yeah. Are you serious? Okay. I didn't even that's, know that's that. That's a statistical <laughs> fact, right? That. So, yeah. so men again oh. are opting out. They're opting out of the divine, you know, creative union, the mastery of male and female expression, you know, equal, but opposite polarized energies. Um, and so you, the planet is obviously a disaster because of that. There is no yeah. understanding of creation force. Um, you know, we have the lowest birth rate, obviously the, you guys know the, the, the chemic, I mean the, uh, the chemical castration and the mm -hmm. environmental mm -hmm. desecration and our endocrine systems being decimated. I mean, I could go on and on obviously, but the reality is we're in a distorted world and psychedelics slash entheogens slash you know doing the things for health optimization are the only ways out of it right like if you are just living in the mainstream and you're doing what they're telling you you know and you're eating the standard american diet i mean you got no shot i mean you're pretty right. much completely entrained and mind controlled i mean that's what it is yep. right you're literally mind yep. controlled oh, yeah. to just be robots and yeah. to not think outside the box so it's like you know people like you guys people like me there are many others thank god now there's enough of us you know, teaching people alternative ways of doing things and understanding that you hold the power within, right? We all know that divinity is within us. It's not right. external, you right. know, but, uh, but, but, but it's, it's awesome that I get a chance to bring people like you guys on the show to talk about that. But you do have another talking point. Uh, and again, we can go anywhere you want with this. If you want to exp expand further on what I just said about the goddess energy, feel free. But uh, you guys wanted to ask about shifting neuroplasticity. Yeah. I think it's way more fun to talk. I mean, the neuroplasticity, right? It's like you take mushrooms, you change the neuroplasticity. Most of the 80%, I'd love to dose them with like six to 10 grams of mushroom to shift the neuroplasticity enough to understand that they're living in a matrix. Let's drop this veil. <laughs> but the, you know, I, the women that think they're men, that's a brain, like they're ego dystonic, which is Carl Jung's theory, but it, it it's unbelievable to me because I actually said this when we spoke at a conference and I thought the whole room was going to like try to cut me, but it was, it was like, you know, I said, I've seen more toxic masculinity in a woman than I ever have in any man I've ever met. And it's like, totally true. They were it's like, totally what? True. And I was like, yeah, I, women. This whole like, well, we can open our own door. Like, feminists <laughs> are the most anti-woman that I have ever met. I'm like, I hate feminists. I, I want a man that understands that I'm ethereal. I connect because of my womb into the ethers. We are oxygen. You cannot Beautiful. live without oxygen. Men control the material. That's why they're supposed to give, protect, and cherish, provide. That gives them purpose. When we take that from them, we have destroyed humanity. I was like, women, that goddess energy is having a man that walks by your side and protects the oxygen. Because if we don't have oxygen by universe, like by earth, well, not really earth, because earth will live on without us, but goodbye humanity. humanity. And, you know, again, I used to be brainwashed into all of this. I mean, in hookup culture and the, the hormones that they give women and all of the stuff, I remember waking up and just being like, I have lived a lie my whole life. And we weren't even brainwashed half as bad as most of the world. And it's like, when we even look at like science and hormones, you know, oxytocin, vaspressin, it's like, you can prove why hookup culture and all of this is just detrimental and why mental health is the way that it is. It's literally goes back to masculine and feminine energy, but yet, you know, a man can claim to be a woman and a woman can claim to be a man and, you know, forget actual science that makes sense saying, you know, we've got different brains. Like literally we're not even the same species. If you looked at our brain patterning, no. Um, but yet 
you know, all of this is going on in society and nobody's asking any questions. I mean, I, I cannot believe the illness. So the neuroplasticity, if we don't, you know, when I, we got into psychedelics, it was like, this is the, I knew in my soul, it wasn't even in my human body, in my soul, that it was the only way to help humanity figure it out. Because if not, we're so far gone that, I mean, the, it's actually unnerving to me to even go to like Target or Walmart now. I feel like I'm in the twilight <laughs> zone because I'm just like, they're zombies. Zombies are real. They're, they're humanity. They're probably 96% of the population. There's only about four or 5% of us that are actually stoic, awake, ready to help, ready to be in service, ready to step in. The rest of them, I mean, it's people just, they, they can't even, it's like you said, Jay, they can't make eye contact. I mean, we're both single because men, I, I can't find divine masculine that can handle me. I mean, it's like- By the way, I love, like, your, huh? I love your onk earring. Oh, I mean, I, you. So look, so you guys, we're gonna talk after this phone, uh, after the show, cause I can connect you with guys that you'll date. Oh, good. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so obviously you guys are both, you gals, I should say you guys, you gals, you go, you gals are both children of the light. That's what I call people yeah. like us. And it's awesome that I'm connecting with you. And honestly, I don't even do podcasts anymore unless I know I'm, I'm like such an intuitive energy reader. And like, when I saw your guys bio, I was like, oh yeah, I want them on the podcast. I didn't know you guys were this tuned on and tuned in, but that's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you want to speak uh, before I, address what you just said because you just said a lot of amazing stuff but if your sister wants to speak real quick megan go ahead um you know i really just think it, at the end of the day it's really truly giving it's taking the feminine the true divine feminine is taking their power back because women and i can speak for megan and i we were raised as little boys mm -hmm. i was mm -hmm. i was raised i was an athlete do better how what did you succeed today what did I, my feelings were never talked about. Right. If you're, if you're hurt, rub some dirt about. on it, right? You're hurt, rub right. some dirt on Don't it. Don't cry. Yes. Be a yes. big girl. Put your big girl panties on. Yep. Like, what? And here I am at 35, and like, Meg and I were talking this morning, we have a girlfriend, a dear friend of ours is getting married in August, and I was like, oh, I didn't, like, I don't really have, like, a dream wedding in my childhood. She goes, Nicole, we were raised as little boys. Duh. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, that's yeah. very fair. Like, <laughs> but you know, in our generation in the, you know, raised in the nineties, we would actually probably be considered transgender or oh, our yeah. parents, like in this new generation, because we played in the dirt. We like spent half the time on a ranch. Like I didn't wear a dress. Megan didn't wear a dress. Like we probably would have been considered this like, oh, well they're transgender because they play outside right. or whatever. Right. You guys were, tom um, you guys were tomboys. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 absolutely. And it's one of those things. It's like society needs to get their shit together, and they need to understand that energy is real. And the Taoists, like, if you go back and study Taoism and all this stuff, you know, people say, "Oh, well, that's not real." Okay, well, why were ans our ancestors, even like Egypt, they had the divine feminine, yes. Cleopatra, mm -hmm. like all of these women that rose to power. Why was it that they wrote out Mary Magdalene? Why did they make her a whore? Yeah. Hmm, I wonder yeah. why. Like, people have to start questioning, like, why is the feminine been erased? Because there's something up. Well, up. well, well, so there's both of you guys are amazing. Like I said, we're going to, there's a lot more talking that's coming after this show. Uh, yes. And I have a lot of people to connect you with, and I have groups to put you in, and you guys are going to be right where you are ultimately led to be, but um, the dark side is very nefarious in what they have done. Everything that you you guys have learned, I have learned, everyone has learned is an inversion of the truth. Now, as I always say, it takes a pure heart to discern. So you can't read an ancient text, you know, and I'll just use the Bible. I mean, the Bible is 80% disinformation. There's, yeah. there's like 20% yeah. ancient spiritual precepts and teachings in there but again if you don't have a pure heart you have absolutely no idea how to discern and obviously all the abrahamic religious teachings have been co-opted and corrupted all of them there's not a single one there's you know the sad part is is a lot of the people that left the abrahamic teachings because they knew they were bullshit went to the east and that was another three-card monty scam to suck the energy 
of the people who awakened <laughs> to the crap out of the uh, Abrahamic teaching. So the truth is, and I know you guys already know this, I keep saying guys, because you're like the two of my boys. But <laughs> the, reality, the reality is um, you have to opt out of all of it. And your teachings, my teachings, teach people to rely on themselves, right? To gain awareness of their higher self. You know, as I say to people every single day, you know, especially in people that I coach, the first conversation is, do you love and trust yourself? Oh, and if that. they look at me like, bro, I love my wife, bro, I love my kids, bro, I love my job, bro, I love this or that, you know, it's like I automatically know like, okay, like you need some deep integration and programming or reprogramming, but let's face it. You, you already said it 5% of us, you know, Dr. Hawkins would always say that once 15% of us got to 300 or higher on the vibrational scale that we would end the matrix because that frequency of 15%, which would be what a billion people. If you believe yeah. the bullshit of 8 billion, which is a lie, probably there's probably like five and a half billion, maybe, but fair, fair. the reality is, is like you get to a billion and that's enough of us to change the frequency, the collective consciousness of the planet. Um, and I think you're right. A lot of people like to say to me, oh, it's 8%, bro. It's closer to 10%. But I'm with you. I mean, like, all you have to do. Now, I will tell you this. You know, obviously, I'm sure you, you gals travel. But uh, most people that live in the East, like India, for example, will tell me, mm -hmm. yes, it's a caste system. But if you go into the country and you go outside of like Calcutta and the big poor, you know, cities and stuff, because it's like everywhere in every country, just big, giant, you know, megalopolises of oppression and depravity and, you know, poverty and all that stuff, you find highly spiritual people. So some of my spiritual mentors will tell me like, no, dude, like if you were in the countryside of India compared to the countryside of the United States, you would not believe in how much more people are aware of reincarnation and how much more people are aware that, you know, the energy of all things of infinity uh, of source is inside them. Whereas here it's a sheep who go to church on Sundays and give their praise <laughs> energy to reptilians. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like uh -huh. they don't really understand what's really happening, but there are more people globally that are actually more aware than, you know, we as Americans comprehend it. I, you know, look, I just spent 10 months in Mexico with my wife and I attempting to leave the matrix of the U S and live in Mexico. And the corruption is just so bad down there too. It's, it's so difficult to actually live in a place where you can be free, uh, you know, or uh, unencumbered in some way, right? Like Mexico, the food is better. They're not spraying the skies. They don't have yeah. GMO food or glyphosate or atrazine or any of that. So the food is better and the sky is clear. And the, you know, we were right by the water. So obviously we had beautiful, you know, blue skies every day, but you've got government corruption, you know, the cartel is yeah. overblown, but there's just so much systemic government corruption that you can't get anything done unless you bribe every person forever. And then once they know you pay the bribe, they never stop. It just, it just yeah. keeps coming, you know, it's like, Oh, this guy, he's a gringo. He pays. So then they just keep coming. So it's like, we left, we came back to Florida. We've been in Florida for five months now. Uh, my two daughters are in high school here with my ex. So that was an easier transition. But then you're here in the States and you realize the skies are contaminated. The food tastes like shit. Uh, you know, you're getting hit with 5G frequency cannons and all the other shit that they lay on us on all day. So it's like, no matter where you go in the world now, you have to deal with the reality that they're attacking us. Yes. And it's a nonstop attack. So obviously getting back to like what you ladies do and what I do, it's like, all these things have to be instituted and regimented into your life as like a regular practice to mm -hmm. avoid slash overcome the frequencies of deception or the frequencies of, you know, we want to mind control you. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's also really important, you know, like we're talking about masculine and feminine and all this stuff, you know, we work a lot with psilocybin because it's androgynous and then yeah. certain individuals, like, Ayahuasca, right? Mother. She's the mother. She's the yep. god grandmother. Peyote, masculine, MDMA. That's the grand, the father energy, right? Yep. And it's understanding these plant energies to be able to do exactly what you're saying, Jay. Like, yeah, it's a it's a spiritual practice that actually has to be practiced. And I'm, we're finding it more and more that so many. There's a lot of spiritual Steves and light and love Lucy's running <laughs> around in this world. Love you, like, oh, I call yeah, Yeah, like I do so many mushrooms. I'm so enlightened. And you're like, 
You don't need more mushrooms. You need more integration. You don't right. actually see what's happening, but yet you're speaking that you think you do. And, you know, and I'm sure you see it. We have found a lot of people that have actually broken the matrix are the most humble ones. Right. They're the ones that aren't having to be like, well, I'm from planet blah, blah, blah. And I'm here to just like tell you how it is. And you're just like, no, 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 no. No, like you and all of your seven malas. I, I think I think you both know. I mean, I I don't think I know from listening to you that the entire new age is contaminated. Like everything that was once, you know, what we desire to pursue. You know, you said love and light, but I mean, just the whole Pleiadian, you know, Arcturian energies of teaching people that the power is within. Nothing is without. Everything is within. The CIA, which is a you know an arm of these dark entities, uh, just contaminates everything. In fact, there's a term for it. Google tries to cover it up, but it's called COINTELPRO. Yeah. And basically, they invade both sides. They're on mm-hmm. both sides. Mm-hmm. So no matter where you go seeking information, again, externally, you're going to be trapped. And so, it goes, again, it goes back to this. And we could talk about this. I know we have a couple other talking points about mindfulness and TFAR and stuff. But yes, the right. truth is, is nothing is without Everything is found within. And until going back to we love and trust ourselves, and you, as you gals both just said, we do the work to integrate, it's not going to matter. It doesn't matter how much mush, how many mushrooms you do. Or, yep. you know, I, I talked to a guy yesterday, I won't mention his name. And he's going to this MDMA ketamine, you know, academy. And I'm like, bro, what is the purpose of that? Right. Like, what, like, what, what, are, what are you doing? From a dosage standpoint, why are you combining these two chemicals? Like, oh, I don't understand any of that, but it's all provided and administered by doctors. I almost like fell over. Like, yep, what? yep, yep. We're on that team. <laughs> yeah, doctors. So it's like, uh, that's where we're going, right? Because like these people hear people like us talking about this stuff and how it's so amazing to integrate trauma and heal your trauma and blah blah blah. But then they're like so fear based that. They still have to let the lab coat gods administer all this. And you and I are all three of us know that ain't going to do shit. Like this has to be done by people that have actually lived this life and integrated this. This is not something where you give it to mainstream culture and allow them to administer. Well, and I think it's really interesting. Um, We, we talked to someone who went down to Peru and he like direct quote out of his mouth. A doctor gave me mushrooms. <laughs> and I was like, a doctor gave you Where the fuck's the shaman? Where's the shaman? Oh, oh, well, the shaman was like, I don't know. I was like, you went and took mushrooms from a doctor with no shaman around? Like, what is happening? And it's he was like, real. yeah, I paid all this money. I was like, okay, I'm going to like end this conversation now. Like, I, oh, well, I, I get it, but I don't at the same time. But people are so programmed. I mean, It was crazy when we spoke at PsyCon. I mean, we were talking about um, transactional analysis because I think it's really important to know which ego state you're in. And I spoke against ego death because I said, no, it's integrating everything. It's understanding the shadow. Don't kill the shadow. Then you're going to go into psychosis. We don't want that. Your your shadow is your strength. It can transmute it into strength. Exactly. Anyway, exactly. I'm standing on it. We're standing on stage to do this whole entire speech. Everybody's like, where the hell did these two come from? <laughs> we have psychiatrists coming up to us like, where'd you go to school? Oh my gosh, will you mentor me? I'm like, I didn't even graduate college. Exactly. I didn't even exactly. graduate Thank college. You. And they're like, they're going cross-eyed. And I said, I'm self-taught, which means more because I didn't have anybody looking over my shoulder telling me what to do. So awesome. I was like, I'm fascinated by all of this now. Mentors. We've had lots of mentors. I I believe in mentors, mentors long term mentorship because you pass codes. Right. My my exactly. mentor is ninety exactly. and she passes me her codes and she right. says, "I was before my time. I know that I came here to pave the way, but it's right. your generation and the people after me that are going to use my work to actually save humanity." She said, "Because this is not good. Yes, we are on the verge because she says women have become objects." When women become objects, the world goes to hell and yes. hell is not a place, it's earth. And I was like, yes. oh shit. She goes, when women become objects, oxygen is evaporated out of humanity and we're all suffocating. And I was just looking at her and I go, her other, oh. famous, her other famous quote is when women drive. <laughs> yeah. She's like, when have you looked drive. at the TV? Women are always driving. What is yeah. the deal with that? And I'm like, she's like, we're in hell. 
Somebody, she's right like, now. Megan, do something. And I'm like, I don't, I'm trying. She's like, try harder. And I'm like, okay, I'm trying. Like, she's like, feminine has to do, because she said, I've never met a man that can be a muse. She goes, I've done this work for 60 years. I've never seen a man be a muse. She's like, women, you have to get the women to become muses again. Right. To stop being objects. Stop selling yourself. Start challenging start inspiring she goes women are they walk around i mean it, 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 it's honestly insane to me we go out to dinner women show up in sweatpants looking like they just rolled out of bed and i'm like where is your goddess energy you don't have to put on makeup you don't have to do any of that but like being there's no light there's right, they're right, just right, like right. this they're in they're so dead. right i'm like right. probably haven't even had an orgasm <laughs> well, I, mean, I actually have met tons of women <laughs> Well, I mean, most women, most women are under fucked. I mean, let's just be honest because there's no man to have sex with them. Oh yeah, no, no. Well, or they they can't even get it up because they're on like some kind of right, you know, beta blocker or something. Or they're drunk. Or they're eating they're eating Doritos and Mountain Dew. Or they're they're so selfish that they have no idea like tantra practices of like don't have an orgasm in 10 seconds like it, 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 it you know that's what people think sex is and i'm like where is the tantra we need tantra teachers like men need to realize that your sex life is going to get 100 my, my times family, better my, so i'm in a very monogamous relationship with my wife my wife is amazing like she you guys would love to talk to my wife she's a very advanced soul but like we have like a minimum like if we're engaging it's one hour minimum minimum yes Good. i love that yeah and that's the way like, it should be well, I mean, like we're going to Vegas this week. I mean, I've been like this year has been insane for me. You know, we moved. We so we left uh, San Diego slash northern. Uh, yeah, no, call it northern San Diego County. We sold two houses, all of our things, all of our material possessions, and moved to Mexico in yeah. November of last year. We were down there for ten months, and now I parachuted back into the matrix. I, we owned nothing except two standing desks, this computer, which is my mm-hmm. iMac uh and some cardio equipment in our clothes right and now i've like yeah. moved back in and i bought like a big mcmansion and you know we've got two cars and i've got material things and just all the shit so it's like i went from nothing to to back to having it so it's like you know all the material trappings i mean obviously my mindset and my attachment to any of those things is not the same anymore like i don't care if somebody came right. in here and said hey i want it all i'd be like take it you know yeah. what i'm saying like i know how to manifest whatever i want but the truth is to what you got gals were just saying here's who we really are and again this comes from like the pleiadian teachings and again when i talk to you guys off air i'm going to give you guys a lot of stuff to like check out but uh all three of us and people like us are literally dimensional incarnations from other higher realms who've come back here to raise the frequency but here's the crazy part about it is we literally are traveling through time we're basically call us uh, you know, they like to use the word system busters, but we literally do come in here to incarnate, to choose, you know, feminine bodies or masculine physical bodies to, to, mm-hmm. to then, you know, mm-hmm. have to wake up through the veil of forgetfulness and all the bullshit of material incarnation. And then once we realize that it's like, oh shit, you know, like <laughs> now, now the purpose is like actually graduating to the higher density again, which we're already mm-hmm. higher than that anyway, as souls, mm-hmm. right? I mean, again, again, we volunteered to come here to fix this because obviously the universe, this is a seismic shift in the universe when this planet does quote unquote ascend to a higher density or dimension or experience mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it, call it a vibration, a frequency. Mm-hmm. And so all of us, are connecting and that's how we connected here today i promise you like right. after the show there'll be a lot more that we'll connect on but it's like i know we're getting closer to yeah. this moment because you can just see it right the dark side is lining up the singularity right it's like they're telling mm-hmm. us it's 2030 man machine merge transhumanist <laughs> culture you know, like you guys were talking about with all the cis and the trans and all this bullshit. I mean, all that is, is just a distortion of the divine masculine, divine feminine, right? The dark yeah. side wants yeah. to tell people, mostly younger people that, you know, you don't actually have to define yourself as a male or female, right? So it's all made up, right? But the, the truth is, is like they're, you know, on their quote unquote, transhuman cyborg food for reptilian timeline. And we are on the divine timeline of like sovereign empowered and free 
Yes. And we and we use, you know, entheogens or psychedelics or, you know, hormonal optimization or peptides or bioregulators mm-hmm. or all these things mm-hmm. to maintain our bioorganic sovereignty as physically incarnated souls in human avatar bodies. It's that right. simple. So it's the yep. bifurcation. You're either over there. And again, over there, these people were vaxxed, chipped, turned me into a robot, plugged me into the metaverse. And yeah. us are like, hell no, motherfucker. Like we are <clears throat> empowered, sovereign, and free humans. And we want to remain that. And as you guys know, it may come to the point of they may just disconnect us. Yeah. With yeah. the social credit system, all of us may just be said, nope, no more bank. You can't get money. We're not getting chipped. Obviously, they're not putting any kind of cards in our wrists that we wave at, you know, ATMs or machines or grocery stores. So all of us may be living on farms. We 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 may be in like, you know, yeah, exactly. We may be in communes, right? Where we're telepathically, we're telepathically communicating because you know we've lost all of these abilities. Yeah, so we're more powerful than any super quantum computer. I mean, nothing can you know fix this crystalline density soul matrix that we have so it's like once we relearn let's call it relearn to use all this stuff all of their bullshit technology will go away and i I don't like to shit all over technology because obviously you we're all connected right now because of this we're having this amazing conversation through technology so there is some uses of it but again at the end of the day it's mostly negative this the emfs come out of this and they harm us you know Mm -hmm. It's like I tell mm-hmm. people all the time, like how many people are even cognizant of the fact that they actually should have some sort of an EMF frequency transmutation technology in their house because it's killing you if you don't have that. Right, right. Especially if you yeah. live in a big city and you're close to a 5G tower. My wife and I, we were just in Austin. My God. I don't know. I hope you guys don't live in Austin, but what a no. No. shithole. Like, I mean, yeah. it's like 5G tower on every block. Yeah. It's like you have a headache living mm-hmm. in Austin, if you're anywhere close to the city. So it's like, you know, and that's what they want, right? They want these smart cities where they herd people on top of each other and everyone's living in a tower without grass, without, you know, plant life and energy, you know, mother earth suppressed. They just want giant tall buildings. So, I mean, because look, you, you guys know this. I mean, people are so stupid, but if you put a bunch of people in a building that doesn't have access to light, you know, one window or two windows on the floor, it's yep. a giant human wave field of negative energy. People sitting in yep. cubicles, hating themselves. Yep. And the dark Lords are literally siphoning their negative energy for fuel. Yep. Mm-hmm. People don't mm-hmm. understand this kind of stuff. This is not conspiracy theory. This is analysis of like really what's happening. You guys already said it. We are nothing more than energy beings. Yep. Yeah. And it's simple to harvest energy when you know how to tune it correctly. And if you keep people in a frequency of fear and anxiety and hopelessness at all times, it's just like a giant feeding trough for the dark lords. Yep. Yep. Well, and it's really crazy because we um, we were just down in July. We were down in Mexico and we sat in a three day pretty intense ayahuasca ceremony. Where, where um, in Mexico? Um, Acamal. Mm. between yeah playa and tulum uh, in the jungle cool. like in yeah. the dirt so yeah, that, that's like, where we lived i lived in playa oh okay yeah, i love, love it, it there love it too there. bad we didn't meet i would have that would have been awesome to connect but anyway keep going <laughs> um you know and it was really fascinating because at some points even in the three days you could feel the split like you could literally see the energy and the breaking of like darkness and light yeah and, you know, when you're in that, ma- when you're in that higher vibration and you're tapped into the mass consciousness on that, like such, you know, extreme level of opening, it's really evident. You can really see how much humanity is just been brainwashed. You know, there are, there are moments where it was just like, oh my God. I mean, I remember reading in ceremony and just watching people struggle with themselves like they couldn't even sit still and you know you've got the shaman that's just like hey you need to just breathe and they're just freaking out and they're yeah. they're fighting the medicine and they're fighting the medicine but you're seeing that they're just fighting themselves but that's all the darkness of all the societal fear and you're seeing it every time you know we don't have tv we don't watch tv um because obviously it's just brain more brainwashing yep. madness, and every time you turn it on it's just fear you know, yeah. and when we work with clients, half of them are just all they do is watch TV or YouTube or like they don't even 
they don't even spend time outside. Like it's mind blowing when we tell people you just need to go for a walk. And they're like, what? I have to go outside? We're like, yeah. And they're like, and we're like, not on concrete. Like go find some like woods. Put your feet in Put the ground. The and they're just, they're, it, it's like the, the darkness is just, it's penetrating so deeply right now. And you yeah. know, we, I always come back to, I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd. Like I always come back to Dumbledore saying, even in the darkest of times, the one pinpoint of light will always shine through. Like right. the darkest, darkest, deepest moments. And you know, I'm as, as being in this, on this plane right now, you know, there are times where you're just like, it's so dark. Right. People with all of their vaccines. I mean, you walk outside, you just look at the fear. They're I mean, dead. They're, just, it's, they're literally they're dead. They're, they're, living, they're the living dead. And they're they like, are. I yeah. scheduled my vaccine. I got my flu shot. I got my, my booster on this arm. And you're just like. And they put it on their social media profile. Yes. They wear it like a badge of honor. And then they drive to McDonald's and they want to know why they're sick. I'm like, well, you got two jabs at McDonald's. <laughs> Don't put your feet in the grass. Wow. Like, this is where society's at. I love you gals. This podcast has about <laughs> zero chance of lasting on YouTube for more than an hour. But that's all right. We'll have this file. We can put it wherever that's we want. Goal. That's a goal. It's fine. Yeah, you guys want. All right, well, what, let's talk about, I mean, because, I mean, I want to talk to you guys off air, but I want to keep this podcast going because it is amazing. Um, so just talk about either one of you, the, the, the importance of balancing masculine and feminine. I mean, we've kind of already talked about it, but just maybe succinctly. I mean, it's, it's everything. Balancing your masculine and feminine is everything. Uh, <laughs> it is because you have to understand if, you, I mean, I walked through, I had shit shows in relationships. Our parents taught us nothing about being in relationships because they didn't know, you know, it's kind of like, that's what you just do. You get married and you drink too much and you know, you're, you don't communicate, whatever. Um, but you know, like Nicole, said earlier we were both raised as little boys and so we were just masculine energy and i didn't understand why i'd meet an alpha man and then you know get into a dick measuring contest with him and of course he would just be like you crazy bye and then i would wonder why like i date beta males they'd be absolutely googly eyed over me and i'd be like you're boring as fuck because i was i am an alpha they're so boring because it's like I have basically have a collar around your neck. I'm leading around like a leash, and they're like yeah. drooling out of the side of their mouth. And I'm like, I don't want to be worshipped. Like, what do I do? Master? No, do I do? literally, I want Again, to surrender. Everything is inverted. Everything yeah. is it's, inverted. It's so bad. Uh, but when you balance your masculine and feminine, you you literally become unstoppable because the masculine is basically the material world, right? At work and right. everything, you're in your masculine. To do yeah. is yeah. masculine. Right. To nurture is masculine to be, to flow, to manifest, to understand divine essence is feminine. And that's yeah. what we've lost. So what people don't understand, I was like, technically we're all transgender because we have both energies. It's about balancing yeah. them. You've been told yeah. a lie that you have to choose. Yeah. And so it's like, it, when we balance these, when we, we can bring forth like my masculine, we can bring forth our feminine and we can balance them. Like when I'm in the presence of a man that I want to date, I want to be in my feminine. But when I want to be a powerful speaker, I want to be in my masculine, right. of like drive home the point, but also be in the feminine flow of not the rid like rigid, like I have to know every talking point. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I, I'm reading the room with my feminine, that's channeling. And then I'm coming at it with my masculine power of being able to push the energy frequency into people. So when you learn this, this is when you break the matrix because it's the balance and knowing I'm coming forward right now in my feminine essence of surrender and love so I can make space for a man to be in his masculine. But when I'm a powerful mother and like protecting my child, I'm in my masculine. Mother bear energy, protecting your children, that is, ma I will kill for you, that right. is masculine. But you also have the divine essence, right? Because I'm a yin body with a yang soul and men right. are yang bodies with a yin soul. So. We have to understand that when we know our masculine and feminine, the incarnation of the human is actually our divine soul in a human form, and that's a divine union. But you have to understand self, and that's understanding your masculine and, and feminine energy. I mean, it's literally, when you learn this, which is ancient, you break everything because you cannot manifest 
unless you have the feminine manifestation and then the going out, seeking opportunities, connecting, that's all masculine. So to be in the material plane, the men rule the material. So your masculine energy rules. So people just sit there and like, I'm just going to manifest a million dollars. I'm like, that's not the way it works. You have to go out. You have to do, you have to seek others, connect, be. Um, and that's why w when we got into the masculine and feminine, it's like, oh, psychedelics can teach this on a different level. Because when you go into your surrender and plant medicine, the stuff that happens, but when you're at war with yourself, if you go in with a masculine mentality of I'm going to fight this, good luck. Right. I, I've been taught over and over again in psychedelic, surrender, surrender, surrender. And every time I surrender, I get more and more into that universal consciousness of love. And when I get into that flow state, I feel like I could connect to every person that's ever lived, that's ever been. And it is this frequency that I, you don't even have human words for it. Uh, but that's all through surrender. And it's like, wow, this is the divine feminine. And we all can hit that state. But it's taught, you know, mainly through divine unions and things like that. Of Because if we didn't have men, if I don't have that grounding energy, I can't shoot off to the space. I don't feel safe. So, you know, we also learned the importance of having men in ceremonies. Because if not, the feminine chaos, we, we did a ceremony with all women. Oh, hell. I oh, never, do man. not, oh. do not do that. Oh. Aboard. Aboard. Aboard mission. It was such oh. dark chaos i was about to surprise you survived like, it oh, <laughs> oh. Lilith, Lilith was definitely there. Lilith, oh Lilith showed yeah up. don't like, worry boss, boss i literally was seeing satan and all oh, of like course. satan i was like holy satan is in front of me like what do i do yeah. i'll tell you guys about a, a a deep experience that i had with my wife in a ceremony I mean, I literally saw a demonic presence in this person. And I actually yeah. knew that the person had the demonic presence, and, and, you know, just yeah. called attachments, right? I mean, we all have attachments at various stages of living in the physical body. But I mean, I knew this and like, I wanted to like, when I went under a five MEO and I was like, just in pure angelic and everyone in the room was amazing. And then there was just this energy to the right. And it was like, I don't even want to acknowledge that it's there. But it's like, you know, once I came out, my wife went next. I, I told her after I didn't say anything until after she was done, but I was like, I want to get out of here. Like I, yeah. I, I like yeah. I don't even want to deal and hold space for this person. And and you know, we couldn't, you know, these obviously these shamanic circles are very sacred the way everything was done. And we we sat there yeah. and we watched this person and this being that inhabited this person. And as you, as you gals know, I'd say probably 30% of people on earth right now are inhabited. Literally, oh, oh, easily, easily, mm -hmm. and they are mm -hmm. not in control of anything. Their energy no. field is hijacked. Yep. They are, they are basically just remote, you know, eating soul eating fiends. Yep. Like you said, yeah. the living uh -huh. dead. Uh -huh. you know? Well, and they're using, they're using our food. They're using, they're talking yep. about you know, a lot of spiritual leaders and people that are in the oh, They own, the, they own every politician on the planet that's worth oh, his way in salt. Oh. Right, and they they talk about you know the parasites in our food. They're very like dark. I mean, there's so much that's mind controlled. You know, the water, the fluoride, the Everything. lack of like pineal gland. You know, like, I mean, there's so much that's around us. All I mean, probably e you know EMF, right? These things, <laughs> like I know. I tell people. I, it's I, amazing. I tell people. I tell people this, like. And by the way, my wife and I, true story, we just upgraded our phones. We haven't bought a phone in five years, right? But our our cameras were dead. So I was like, well, we're going to Thailand. It's time. And like, it's yeah. time. Yeah, it's like we want to take good time. pictures. I mean, there's that's the only thing you get from technology with phones is like the ability to have memories from images, right? True. But I mean, everything else is, is satanic or demonic, whatever you want to call it. But um, as you were just saying, this is like the spec military rubber on these things goes into your skin and just destro destroys your endocrine system disrupts yeah. you makes you infertile why do you think yeah. men and women your guys ages today can't even get pregnant yeah no oh, it's i mean it is insane and you're even like i can't believe like the <clears throat> men in our generation i'm like why do you have man titties like what is happening 
No like, testosterone. Oh, they have big old bellies. I'm like, you're no, not even no testosterone. All this, this is, I mean, I literally just gave a lecture about this, but this is all by design. Yeah, uh, like it happens that. in utero. They won't talk about this. I, I, like I said, I don't care at this point now. You guys, you, I, I love both of you, by the way. You, like you're triggering me to say stuff that I would never say. Cause like, I, it's too late. This episode is already spoiled. I mean, it's one of my best episodes ever, but I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> So trans, so I, I mean, I'm just gonna say it. So trans people are actually uh, contaminated in utero by a lack of testosterone in the fetus. Yep. So what ends up happening? I mean, because and I know you both know this, you're very smart. But like for people that are watching this and don't, for the, for those of you that are watching this in the limited time that you're able to watch it. <laughs> Uh, before they delete it, you know, and I know you guys are listening at all times, but the reality is um, there's testosterone separates male and female sexual differentiation. Yep. A masculine being a boy, a, again, yes, I will say it. There's only male and female, two yep. equal but opposite ma uh, polarized energies, but a boy is exposed to more testosterone in utero than a female. And when you have no testosterone. And this is what's happening now because obviously birth control in the water supply. We also know this is a, this is a scientific fact. Anybody can fact check me and Google this up. But if you put a male fish in any freshwater stream, tributary aqueduct or lake in North America now within 12 months, it's a female. So with all of this feminizing estrogenic phytoestrogenic, again, endocrine disrupting chemicals, thylates, BPA, all these things, you automatically are taking a masculine energy and converting it to a feminine energy, right? And then the feminine, as you guys know, is usually uh, chemically castrated to become hyper-masculine. And so it's just, just <laughs> giant, again, let's call it spiritual war. They're inverting okay. The truth, the, which is again, women are what you exactly said. We're spo are supposed to be the creative, the flow, you know, the emotional, the nurturers, mm -hmm. and men are go out, you know, hit the freaking thing over the head, bring home the bacon, and yeah. all of that is now all of that is now turned upside down. And so, people, mm -hmm. trans, who are completely sexually confused, because again, there's nothing that went on in the womb that designed them to matriculate and become actual males or females are left with this. Like, I don't feel like a dude. I mean, like, you know, I have doctors I talk to when we're at private and ladies, I'm not kidding you. They'll be like, well, they're just confused because they don't have enough testosterone to feel a male. And the women don't have enough estrogen to feed, to become a female or to feel like a female. So they get confused. And then, you know, what happens, they go to the internet, they have demonic parents who are triple vaxxed and boosted who tell them, Oh, it's okay to transition. Then they go to the government and the government pays for them to transition. Do you, do you know this? I didn't know this until recently. If you transition, you will never have an orgasm the rest of your life. But imagine that. I was curious about that because I was like, if you That's if your fun. parts aren't right, like, why would you give up the best? I mean, it's literally so, the best part of being human. So why you, would, like, yes, you said it earlier. Credit uh, to you. The orgasmic energy that a woman can generate, especially when she can release Kundalini, is more yeah. powerful than five thousand nuclear hundred megaton bombs. It's literally oh, it's the power yeah. of creation. Yeah. yeah. So if you take away, take away the ability to, to, to achieve and feel and experience orgasm, you take away the divine masculine, divine feminine's power. So again, all of this is an attack on creation. And again, I know since this podcast is going to get deleted, I'm going to go deeper. <laughs> this is the reptilians. Love all of this. This is the reptilians from fourth density service to self, which is demons, astral spirits. There's a lot of names for so Anunnaki. They have literally been attempting to contaminate this realm because they know that there are divine beings like you and I and many others here and trap us so that eventually they can just literally make this place a giant etheric fuel source for them, right? Because they literally eat our suffering and they obviously eat us physiologically too. I mean, people don't realize that, and this is, again, I'm going deep here, uh, before the vapor canopy collapsed on planet earth. Mm -hmm. There were giant beings here, plant life, yes, yes. vegetable life, animal life, 
humans, humans were 20 to 25 feet tall, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it stands to reason that the reptilians, the reptiloids, whatever you want to call them, were literally dragons. Jehovah and yeah. Yahweh were somewhere between 16 and 25 foot reptilian beings literally riding around on dragons, not dinosaurs. That's a bullshit story. There were dragons here. When they find bones, they're dragons. There's no yeah, yeah. dinosaurs is a fabrication. It's a total fabrication by the you know 33rd degree masons and the secret societies that are under the lordship of the reptilian overlords. But the reality yeah. is they've made all this stuff up. But if you go deep in meditation, you connect yourself with your Pleiadian energy, which everyone has Pleiadian energy. And everyone has a soul that's human that's here in this third dimension. You will realize that what I just said is all true and that this has all yeah. just been covered up. Why do you think there are dragons and reptil reptilian beings in every indigenous culture on this planet? They called them the sky gods. They're everywhere. Yeah. There's tomes. There's little, you know, antiques. It goes back to the Sumerian times. It goes back to the Viking times. It goes back to the aboriginals. Like every culture, the Incas, the Mayas, the Aztecs, every culture has these serpent uh, totems. You know, we talk about the Kundalini energy, the rise of the serpent through the physical body. It's because the serpent beings were the creators. Yeah. But everything mm -hmm. has been hidden from us. But now people like me, you, others, we're all awakening to the reality that at one point the serpents were benevolent. And then they went to war amongst themselves and separated, right? It's the separation from source. And now this is where we are. This whole planet is separation. The dark people call them, you know, the hybrids of them uh, run the planet. They run the political structure. They run Hollywood. They even run the professional sports stuff. People don't even get that. But like mm -hmm, the whole mm -hmm. control structure is run by them. And it's like, at what point are people going to wake up to this? That like, you're not going to change here. Your goal is to integrate your energy to recognize like who and what you are. And then, you know, start serving creation, serving other people without attachment or expectation so that you can graduate out of here. That's the only plan. That's the only path is to graduate out of here. Now, obviously you can lead and teach like we do mm -hmm, with this mm -hmm. type of information and people do gravitate to this. Now I'm sure you guys or gals know when you have conversations like this with the right people, they're not like looking at you like you're some sort of conspiracy whack job. You guys haven't no. thought I'm a conspiracy whack job for anything I said because you're like, yeah, 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 that resonates. Yeah, yeah, that resonates, right? I mean, I, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of us now. I mean, again, it's still a low number, but there's a lot more of us that know what's going on here. Well, and I think, you know, if I look back, you know, COVID was a big part of the veil dropping. <coughs> COVID, you know, God bless you. Dark, dark light, you. whatever way, the COVID was supposed to be a very dark thing. But it was it woke a lot of people up. Shining the like, light. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Oh shit. They're all waking up. Like, I mean, so many people either left jobs or like got faced, you know, they were faced with the vaccine and like all of this stuff. But it was them having to actually ask themselves, like, what do I stand for? And you know, you saw all these conspiracy theorists coming up. Like, I loved all the conspiracy during COVID because the main meme was. The difference between conspiracy theorists and the truth is about six, six months weeks, or, or six, six weeks. Six yeah, weeks. Yeah. No, I think it is six, six weeks, weeks now. now. It's six, six weeks now. Six weeks now. now. Yeah. Um, right. But you know, it's it's they they have to tell us, right? Like the darkness has to be honest because that's a part of their contract, like Illuminati. Like, it's like, universal law to, to expose it's, the it has truth. To be honest. It's well, yes. it's speak, yeah. It's it's free will. Right. You have to honor exactly. Free will. Right. Right. And, so and see, people don't realize here. it's funny. You just said that though. And I don't mean to cut you off, but people yeah. don't realize that they do consent to everything that happens. Everything. But that's because they're victims. The right. whole victim mentality. I, right. Oh, I despise it. I used to be one. And it's like, now it's we like, people are like, well, poor me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, poor yeah. you. Blah, you, blah, deserve, blah. Like, you deserve more what, better. Like, deserve what? There's your Here's your bottle, and on top, it's the nipple <laughs> called the government. You're welcome. Yeah, but you know what's so Keep drinking it because it's not going to get you anywhere. But there's been a divine plan. There is a divine plan happening. And I sit there and I look back at my life. And actually, my sister and I were talking about this because there's a 
love and light Lewis that exists in the spiritual plane. I won't name him here because one day you will see me take him down because he is he's so fucking full of shit. He's oh, probably he's a reptilian. He's 100%. a reptilian. 100%. And I met him and I've been involved because I was a private flight attendant. So I know a ton of billionaires that are full of shit. And sure. then I lived in West Hollywood as a yoga teacher and met way too many people. And saw the underbelly of Hollywood and the oh. bullshit. And I have been protected by angels my whole damn 100%. life. Because part of my, what I'm here, Nicole and I are here to do is that I have three books that I'm going to publish. And guess nice. what? Truth is an absolute defense to liable. And it's like, take down the whole thing. Because I've seen all of the darkness, how they sell, you know, women that are yeah. like 16 as models, objectification, everybody wants their child to be a model. Yeah, demonic as hell. Anyway, it's, there's all of this, but there's this divine plan. And the, the ones that are of the light, it's like, we've had this protection around us, even yes. though we've been in the darkest places. Yes. I've seen shit that I never, I was yes. like, why did I see this? This is absolutely horrible. And now I look back on it and I go, oh, ho, 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 so I can take down some some people because yeah. they cannot fight when you have proof. Yes. And it's so when we see these kinds of things, it's like you step completely out of victimhood because you're like, my whole life I've I have been nothing but light in a dark place. And it's time to finally step into that. And so many people are like that, but they're still in the victimhood of poor me. All of this happened to me. I'm like, no, it was making you strong enough to step into because being light in this dark is no easy game. Sometimes I'm like what the hell did I sign up for? Who signed me up for this? Somebody's in trouble of who convinced me to it's sign so this contract. contract. So, then- so, so both of you are Pleiadian. I already know this. And, and to what you're just saying, two, there's two things the Pleiadians teach us. Two things. That's it. There's these only two things. Now, yes, you already know we're here to evolve and grow our soul. I'm closing my eyes channeling this right now. But one, you just said it, which is beautiful. Overcoming victimhood. That's number one. The veil is thick materialization is thick, obviously shiny things. We get caught up in that bullshit. We're all in victimhood for a while. But number two, we've been saying it indirectly the entire podcast is managing our energy field. That's the only two things, right? Overcoming victimhood, which is very difficult, especially for women, right? Because again, women are stolen from a young age, taught that they don't have to do anything that, you know, if you just look good, some man will take care of you. Well, obviously that's inverted in the last 10 years because you got you guys both know there's no men. But that's most women. And that's how they stole the goddess energy from women because they literally told them that they didn't have to do anything except look good and you know, be hot chicks for the fallen angels or whatever. It's insanity, right? But when you when you realize that when you overcome victimhood, which both of you have, I have, many people like us now are, you don't fear anything, right? Because you know death is not the end. Death is just another form of, you know, changing. Right. I, I like to say yeah. death is changing focus from physical to etheric, right? So you don't have none of that. And then managing your energy is okay. I can choose to respond out of love, or I can be like most people and react out of fear, yep. you know, and freak out and go crazy and do all these things <laughs> that these people do, screaming at the top of their lungs at people in airports. Why are you not six feet away from me? You need three masks. Where's your third mask? You've seen it, right? But all these people are conditioned to be this way. And it's like, once you overcome fear, you know, which is overcoming victimhood, you're good. And then from there, it's like a conscious choice every single day to choose to respond out of love. And you both know it's not easy to respond out of love. We're being attacked at all times by literal demons, by incarnated discarnated entities, demonic reptilian beings who are inhabiting humans who are posing as love and light. Yeah. Yep. The whole love and light industry, by the way, and I could name names, you guys, I won't, you know, <laughs> you know, but almost all of them have a reptilian entity that is projecting yeah. on top of them or inside of them, you know, and sometimes more than one. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. difficult for people because people are waking up and they're like, I mean, I want to say it so bad. I'll, I'll say it off the air, but like, you know, they want to, they want to jump to this person because this person is all over the mainstream with his love and love. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, uh, every time I hit talk to somebody about that, I'm like, you need to stop doing that. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because so-and-so is a reptilian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, but it's also, it's also, so yeah, it's a reptilian, but it's also look, looking outside of yourself for validation. There's one yeah. thing to have a coach totally. and a mentor. There's a totally different entity of, you know, like you're talking about the modeling industry to look at the internet now. Yes. Okay. So go back to the 1990s and like early 2000s, like we're all, it's all coming back up because Brittany dropped her, her book. We're all talking about it. David Beckham <laughs> has his thing on Netflix. Like we're all being reminded, but women were still women. Now women look up, look like blow up dolls in pin cushions because Insane. they have no fat on their bodies because it's probably been sucked out of them. Let's be honest. Their tits are so big and their face doesn't move and their lips are so injected that oh. they literally look like blow up dolls. And exactly. that's what we're teaching our children, the young girls to grow up to be. We had Christina Aguilera and Brittany, you know, yeah, their pants were a little low, but those, they were women. They yeah, still yeah, yeah. had curves. Yeah. And it's so much darkness in the feminine right now with this porn culture, I mean, porn culture is just disgusting. Horrible. I mean, it is horrifying. Yes, low testosterone, but they, they are destroying the image of what women are supposed to look like. And then the transgender on top of that. I mean, it's it's really, really dark. And people are looking up to this and it's like, wow. Like, like we, we've gotten here, humanity. This well, is where well, we are. Thankfully, but thankfully we have you both. And there are other people like us. I'm serious. I mean, I mean, honestly, like you guys are very, very, you're very bright beacons of light. And I'm so grateful that I got a chance to talk to you today. So let's just end the show because you realize an hour and six minutes, this has been so amazing. I mean, literally it won't last 10 minutes on YouTube. But um, I'm going to give you, I, I, we, we will have the file. They can't steal the file from us. I, I do, I do want to ask you though about TFAR and then also the legalization of this because I think- Again, if 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 it does break off, you know, we don't ascend. Let's say ascension doesn't come for another 20 or 30 years. I mean, time doesn't even matter. But, like, let's say it doesn't. We'll be living on communes together. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. no doubt about it. But, like, you know, for, for, for not talking about that and maintaining the status quo, um, just talk about the decriminalization of it, like, where we are. Um, so right now, Oregon is the first state to fully decriminalize and are using it in therapeutic practices. Um, if you're looking at, you know, sitting with a doctor, sitting with someone, you're looking at about $6,000 for about three grams of mushrooms, which is really quite insane. Um, but, you know, if that's your cup of tea, go for it. Oregon's, you know, they're, they're paving the way for it. Colorado just decriminalized. And it, as of 2024, we will hopefully have more of a structured, if you like structure, um, government rules. But right now, Colorado is fully decriminalized. Um, many states are right behind us. California, the dark lord over in California didn't quite pass it yet. Um, he's looking for more of the financial gain. Yeah, he, he needs he needs more incentives. How much money, yeah. Um, the lobbyists haven't paid him off enough for him to sign the bill. Um, okay, but anyways, so California is right behind it. Many other states are looking at decriminalizing psilocybin um, and other natural plant medicines. Um, but in regards to, you know, psilocybin in particularly right now, California and Oregon are, are or excuse me, Colorado and Oregon are paving the way for the rest of the country. Uh, the great thing about it with Colorado, the way that Colorado went about it was a lot different than what Oregon was, and it opened a lot of gateways for more research. So the cool thing about it is now um, more universities, more medical, they're able to get into this. Uh, we've been contacted by multiple medical sources. They're like, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, what's, what are you seeing? Like, what's happening? Um, because the medical community can now talk about it. And so that's the great thing about it. Although there's always government going to have their finger in it. It's now becoming more mainstream and more people are able to say, Hey, like, let's have this conversation. At least it's awesome. taking away the, the fear. Yeah. I don't really like the bureaucracy and the government being a part of it, but right. at least the fear is starting to go away of using psychedelics. And that's why I'm, for the decriminalization and things like that is just because it's starting the conversations and the fear is starting to go away because if you dose seven grams of mushrooms you're going to believe in god after that there's just no like of course way about yeah, it absolutely. so 
you know, I don't really. And, and you know who God is, right? Like I, I yes. tell all these people, like they think, I mean, again, you know, and we, we can hammer this all you want, but like the, the religions have destroyed the definition of God because most people literally do think that God is judging them from a trot with a trident in his hand in a robe and, and, and right again, God is a man. I mean, even I brainwashed to say it. You yeah, don't even realize it. God, he, you know, the patrimony, yeah. but it's like God is sitting with a white robe with a beard. You know, he's a, he's an Aryan white man, you know, and he's got a trident and he's looking down at you and judging you. I swear to God, that's literally 3 billion people yeah. on planet earth. I mean, is yeah. Muslims, Jews, Christians all think that. And, and to, to de, de, you know, to deprogram them from that idea. But as I said, I mean, you know, and I've said this many times, I've written an article that's sourced on Arrowhead about the, the uh, 5MEO. The first time you blast off that ship into the source field, you know what God is. God is not a guy or a girl. It's an energy and a frequency. I, I mean, it's literally that simple. It's the force of creation. And people have no concept because they're so brainwashed. And then, you know, when you say that to them, they get all fear-based. Uh, I, I don't think ayahuasca or 5-MEO is for me, bro. Why? But, but yet they're dying of cancer they because the they have six jabs and it has destroyed their body. And they still, I'm like, what What do you them. have to lose? I'm like, what? You're, you're going to die. What but do you have to lose? And they're like, I'm sad. scared. I need chemo. I'm like, no, no, no. Go down and do God. Iboga, Ibogaine, then do ayahuasca right after. Right, have right. some Cambo at the same time. Get your shit straight Maybe spiritually because Google. that's your problem. You hate yourself, so your body's attacking yourself. Like, we've been so brave. I'm like, dis-ease? You are in, out, you are out of alignment with your right. soul. That's right. why you're killing yourself. Right. Dis-ease is all energy. Exactly. I'm like, but they, they're going to go get, you know, how many shots of chemo and their hair's all going to fall out. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I used to think that was the answer too. And I actually have so much sympathy and empathy for these people that yeah. are doing this and still buy in because it breaks my heart. I'm mm -hmm. like, there are answers out there and you're choosing not to see it because you're still afraid you're on your deathbed. You have stage four cancer. I would be on the next plane down to Mexico right. contacting every shaman I ever like get a hold of like yep. when and where can I do this because yep. I'm not right with my divine soul. Right. Not oh this is just normal to get cancer. Why have the cancer rates gone up like 60% in the last 20 years? People. I just it actually baffles me. It baffles me that people cannot look at this and see what is going on because it is so obvious once you wake up that it's like a billboard been inside like in your face your whole life and and we've been just like la 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 like what what I, I would well i would so i would argue that some people can't wake up i mean i mean I obviously know. you and i all three of us see things exactly as you're saying it right but like yeah. you've seen it so often that you start to question whether or not some of these people don't really have souls. Are they just NPCs in this third dimensional frequency, you know, designed to, to lead us astray. I mean, if this is truly the ultimate school for souls, then yeah, there are beings here that aren't going to wake up. They're not soul beings. They're not aware consciously. They're basically inorganic holograms in the matrix. And we're supposed to like learn from their, whatever that they teach us. I, that's why I always say whatever. I don't want to judge or condemn, but it's not, you know, holographic organic divinity. It's something opposite of that. And so it's like, if they can teach us to like, Oh no, I don't want any more of that. I, I don't want to deal with this being who sucks my energy. Right. Cause as you guys know, there's so many freaking energy vampires out there spending five minutes with them is like, Oh my God, I got to get away from you. It's bad. It's really bad. It's really... And it's gone significantly worse. Well, it's look, we'll, we'll end this podcast. I'll talk to you guys about it. But like the truth is, is that this planet right now is at a level of we either get enough people to get like us and to wake up. And I'm not saying that from an ego standpoint. I'm saying that from a reality standpoint. And obviously oh, it's, yeah, it's true. both yeah. you teach ways by using, you know, micro doses of mushroom psilocybin for people that don't know what that is. I mean, most people on my show do know that, but it's like whether it's psilocybin or whether it's ayahuasca or peyote or ibogaine 
or 5-MEO. That's my favorite, obviously. I mean, all of these things can connect you with Mother Earth, the goddess energy. Yes. And then instantly you have cognizance of what is really going on and the questions that most people have, which are all just fear-based, right? I mean, we all know that everything stems back to death. I'm afraid of yes. dying. Yeah. But when I overcome the fear of dying, I, 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 I'm not limited. You know, I can think about these bigger picture things that we've talked about for amazingly an hour and almost 15 minutes. And I cannot be hemmed in or constrained by the idea that like, oh, I can't even think about that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's not right. Like somebody will judge me or, you know, I'll have shame that I'm even thinking about this. And so many people are still there. That's what's so crazy. But, but in truth, I'm going to let you guys get the final thoughts. Both of you speak. Um, what would you say to someone who is never used psilocybin or plant medicine or entheogens or any of that to what would be your coaching strategy or encouragement to them to consider doing it, especially, well, if they haven't, obviously they're usually fear-based, but what would be your strategy? Uh, listen to your heart and what you're called to, because that's your medicine. Um, you know, and what you need, because again, there's masculine and feminine energy, there's androgyny with mushrooms, but your heart, the, the mind thinks, but the heart knows. And if you filter things through the heart, you cannot be lied to, you know, whether what's right and wrong for you. So tap in, tap into your heart and, and listen, like, what are you drawn to? What do you, because I knew when I heard of ayahuasca the first time in like 2016, I was like, I want to do that. How do I do it? And that was so, you know, off base for what I did, you know, drugs were like, you know, that was a drug back then instead of a right, plant medicine. Right. So listen, you'll know. And it's like, as soon as you hear about it, you're going to be like, I need to do that and go and do it because it will be one of the best things you've ever done for your soul's evolution. And it's, it's calling you. So answer. Beautiful. Yeah. I would just like piggyback on that. Like, even if, you aren't thinking about it, but it keeps coming up in your, you know, like in your bubble, in your sphere, in your podcast. I can't begin to tell you how many people will apply and inquire with us to coach. Oh, I was just like on a run and randomly this podcast with you two popped up. I don't even listen to that podcast. Okay. That's like, that's like a divine universal sign of like, Hey, maybe you should look at this. Yeah. Um, pay attention. Like so many people are so checked out and they're so on like autopilot, like, be present. Listen to what's going on in your universe because your universe is going to tell you. Yes, heart and mind or heart, yes, heart and mind are always a thing, but listen. Listen. Turn your ears on. Take your AirPods out and listen. <laughs> like actually listen. Um what's going on around you? What are what are people curious about around you? And if they're not elevating you, then get some new friends. If you're not getting curious with the people you hang out with and what you're doing in everyday life, like this is a journey of a soul evolution, whether you are a soul or not a soul here. Most of them probably listening to your podcast are souls. Um, you know, like this is a playground. This shouldn't be painful. This, you know, yes, there's going to be hard moments in life. Like that's life. Um, but being willing to step in and actually listen and letting go of the societal things um, in the, the matrix and the programming will, you know, get you to where you're supposed to be. Megan and Nicole Michelena, you both are amazing souls, and I am truly humbled, privileged, grateful, and honored to have you on the Jay Campbell podcast today. I mean, I literally just went an hour and 18 minutes with you, and I have not done a podcast this long in a long time, and you guys like triggered me so amazingly to come out with stuff that I would normally never say. I mean, who knows? Maybe the Jay Campbell podcast shuts down after this episode for good, and I just... <laughs> I just go literally full blown, like internal and only connect with people like yourselves. But listen, for all of you gals and guys that watch this podcast right now, uh, this was profound. Uh, follow them on IG, look into their institute, which again is called Zenchronicity. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you gals and guys very soon.